You're listening to The Marketing Trench, the official podcast where no real estate professional gets left behind in the pursuit of building a business they can be proud of. A podcast designed to help you build the foundation of a powerful real estate career. Join real estate experts Ricardo Bueno, Marketing Technology Director at West, Dustin Stevie, CEO of Lighthouse Escrow, and Scott Shang, partner at Bywise Mortgage and founder of Find My Way Home, as they bring you real-world strategies, marketing ideas, and solutions straight from the trench. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost evil. I know. It's so good. <laughs> it, well, it was Halloween. <laughs> when we recorded this. Who knows what it's probably Christmas by the time this airs, given how quickly Ricardo's working on his website. What a disaster. Welcome to the Marketing Trench Podcast. Uh, Ricardo just shot hand sanitizer all over his computer like a pro. Um, <laughs> pro tip. Pro tip. Do not put your hand sanitizer in front of, on top of your computer. <laughs> so we're good. Uh, today we're going to dig into the topic of the Pareto distribution. And if you're not familiar with what the Pareto distribution is, you probably heard it in more colloquial <clears throat> terms like the 80-20 rule mm-hmm. or maybe even the Matthew principle. But the idea is that the majority of, say, initially this was a, this was a wealth principle, was an economics tool, um, and the majority of the wealth uh, accumulated or accrued to a minority of the population. So 80% of the wealth went to 20% of the population. Now, uh, this isn't an economics podcast. This is a marketing and sales podcast. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to dig into how this rule might apply to marketing and sales efforts. Um, and... For this episode, uh, this is an, this is going to be an example of an episode that's much more experimental than a rest. Normally, conceptual, yeah, conceptual. Because normally, when we go into this, like we're we got a pretty good idea of what we're going to say. Um, we've you know worked a lot of this stuff out. We've you know maybe seen it in practice. This one is not that. This one is um, mostly Scott has recently read a book. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's exciting. It's exciting for us. It, it had pages and everything. <laughs> it was, it, he, and it was great because he had his crayons. He was able to color in it. Um, stayed in the lines mostly. Mostly, yeah, mostly. <laughs> Scott recently read a book that he's going to talk a little bit about, and and, um, we were talking about this offline, and there's a lot of questions we have. So this is going to be a a sort of conceptual dig-in. So get your your picks ready, get your shovels ready, because we're actually digging in the trench today. Um, Scott, I want to toss this over to you. What was the name of the book with the pictures that you read? Uh, And uh, broadly speaking, what's what's kind of the idea here? No, there actually were pictures in it, so it was really good. (laughs) um, um, It was Perry Marshall's 80-20 Sales and Marketing. Okay. So it was based off of um, Richard Koch's book, 8020 Principle, which is based off of Pareto Principle. And it's interesting that you, you mentioned the Matthew Principle also because I've been really thinking about that a lot as well. And I think, I think 8020 is the, is the, 8020 is the principle that both describes and is the path um, in order for you to realize the Matthew principle, which is those who have will be given more. Mm-hmm. And it really at the very, very top, not at the, so, so this is where 80, 20 is, is, is interesting because what it essentially means and you, and you, you look at it, um, you know, when they, when they did the, the tax, uh, the, 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 the new tax rules, the income tax, uh, when they redid that, and everybody was like, "Oh, wealth distribution and all of this stuff." Well, if you income inequality, if, income inequality. But if you look at the income taxes, um, literally, in order to be one percent, you you have to. It's not very. It's not very high. I mean, like people think a billionaire is a one percent. A billionaire is not one percent of society's income. A billionaire is like. <clears throat> one one hundredth of one percent like one percent of income earners make about three hundred thousand a year three hundred fifty thousand a year and it's it's a crazy distribution but that's what Pareto distribution is and Pareto distribution basically says that a very small fraction of anything is going to account for the overwhelming majority of the output and and it's just it's a it 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 occurs in nature. Uh, it's a mathematical principle that can be applied to absolutely everything. And it's not always eighty twenty. Eighty twenty is conceptual because um, with the internet and with as much data and with as much access to data as we have now, it's kind of even skewed. So now it's kind of ninety five five. 
Um, but 80-20 kind of describes how you get there, and the Matthew principle almost describes what happens once you're there, right? So, and it was interesting. I was doing research on the Matthew principle, and that was actually, it was actually coined by, um, it was like a research scientist. It, it's a scientific, uh, a, a scientist um, used that to describe kind of how um, lead scientists end up getting the 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 credit and the Pulitzer um, for uh, all of the work that their uh, their subordinates did, mm-hmm. and, and that was kind of how how they were. That was kind of how it came about. But what they don't what what they don't talk about it. And again, this is the whole wealth distribution conversation is what did that lead scientist, what was their journey, and what was their path in order to get into a position to bring on people to explore what their thought process was or what their theory was and prove their theory. Okay. So, so we're so, lost right now. I no, no, actually, so so we've set the table here, um, and it applies in a number of different ways, and this is an idea that's been yeah. articulated many ways from many different... Uh, We'll, we'll call them intellectual disciplines, academic disciplines, science, economics. Um, but uh, I think it's important to understand that these are principles. Also, these are these are not these are not things that somebody didn't make these up. This occurs naturally in almost every single aspect of humanity. Right. Like if you look closely enough, it's like, oh, look, eighty percent goes to this twenty percent over here. So, so the question now is, so, you know, given that it is a well-established principle, that's basically what we were just saying. Um, how <laughs> you could have just said that, no. <laughs> but I mean that, that you kept an obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so given that it's a well-established principle, <laughs> how in the world is, is this something that we can apply to yeah. sales and marketing? Yeah. So, well, it, it it it's amazing because it, it it applies to absolutely everything. So the the the, the example that we were talking about. Um, that the off exercise, air. yeah, off off air. That that the exercise that I'm going through right now is um, is uh, past client follow up, right? So we were talking about this. We we had an episode on um, the value of your past client database, and the reality is your past client database is not all not all as valuable as as every other past client. Right, they're not all created equally. They're not all created equally. So let's say you're sending out newsletters, right? Or let's say you're sending out um, pumpkin pies or you're making an investment in your past client database. The reality is 80% of your past client database probably doesn't know who you are and they don't care and they'll never do business with you again. Those are the, those are the people that, what are the NAR statistics that 80% of people say that they'll do business with, with the agent and like almost none of them do like 14% or something. 74% say they would work with the same agent again, but less than 14% do. Correct. So there's your 80, 20 principle. And, (laughs) and so what, what, how this applies to sales and marketing and what Perry Marshall explores, um, very, very eloquently is, is you have to identify where your, who your 20% is first, and that's where you invest your time and your resources, especially if you're an entrepreneur. We have very, very limited time and resources. So here's a, here's an, so a, a, how, do you, how do you do that? Maybe you're getting there, but how do you do that? How do, how do you identify? So your, here's, here's the perfect, ex- yeah. So here's the perfect example of, of, so this is, again, we're thinking this out as we go along. Um, I have been thinking about this a lot, so I can at least answer your question, hopefully somewhat intelligently. <laughs> um, but for instance, I have um, we've been focusing we've been focusing intensely on our past clients, and between uh, uh, Josh Lewis, my partner, um, he's been in the business for twenty four years. I've been in the business for twenty years. We've been at different companies. We've been doing different things, and we have um, you know uh, almost fifteen hundred past clients that we have that we found the data and mm-hmm. have been able to compile it into a database. So we started doing um, direct mail to that database, and that gets expensive. You know, it's a couple thousand dollars a a, a piece. But the reality is, overwhelming majority of those people don't know and don't care. So why would we spend all of that money in there? So what is the 20% of our past client database that we could focus the most time, energy, and, and, and uh, money into? And, 
and where Perry Marshall really takes this to the next level is is it's fractal. So so that twenty percent of the people that are going to send you the most business, the the twenty percent of that twenty percent is four percent of your entire database, and those people are going to do something like a thousand times spend a thousand times more money with you than the entire ninety six percent of your database, and and this can be mathematically proven over and over and over again, depending on your business and how you do business. So this is how we looked at it. So take my entire database. What percentage of those people gave me a, gave me a review? They took the time to leave you a review. <clears throat> That's probably, and this isn't 80, 20, this is probably 95, five or because, um, we've done a shitty job of asking for reviews in the past. Right. Um, it's probably 97, three, right? So we're trying to grow that percentage of people, but that is a, that is an indicator that that particular segment of our past client database has a higher investment in our brand or the experience that we delivered to them than everybody else in our database. So what can I do to wow that percent? Fractally, within those people that gave us reviews, how many people um, gave us a referral, right? So, So who are you going to spend the most time and effort and energy into asking for referrals and rewarding them for giving you referrals? It's going to be the people that leave you five star reviews. So, it, it, and again, this, this and this kind of goes into the other conversation. I don't know if it's the same conversation. I'm confused now. I was up late last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you 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 have those people that give you reviews, and then you have the repeat business from them. And so this is our data. This this actually is the other podcast that we're going to talk about because this is talking about data. You you what is the lifetime value of a data set? Right. Right. And that's a super cold way of saying how much money will your client is your cl- each client worth to you over a long period of time. It is not how much money can I get out of Ricardo. But if Ricardo <laughs> likes me, who is he going to introduce me to that I can also make money from? It reminds me of a birthday card. <clears throat> Hey, Ricardo recently just got <laughs> so so and but I mean think about that now and think about the exponential the exponential power of of that if I have one happy customer that happy that customer may never do another loan with me but if they leave me a five star review which contributes to other people seeing their their description of their of that experience mm-hmm. that gives them that that bridges that trust gap just a little bit more and then that same person uh, is maybe an evangelist for me and they tell five other people and then those five people leave a review and maybe they refer five people to me and so the lifetime value of that one customer experience it doesn't matter i could have lost $10,000 by doing business with that customer that left me that five star review that could be worth millions of dollars over 10 years yeah yeah okay so there was a lot there i want to i want to dive into some of it make sure that we're pulling out the the nuggets of gold that you just said um so one thing you're saying is, A, not everyone in your database is created equally. There's the 80-20% rule, the 80-20 rule that applies. So one way to identify who's in the 80 and who's in the 20 is to come up with metrics that show that certain individuals in your database are really on board with you. So one metric is going to be leaving a review. Another metric might be giving you a referral. And then sometimes in a fractal way, so in other words, you get a percentage the, the, to the third power it's repeat business. Yeah. So so it's, so, it's, so sometimes you'll have people who only give you a review and uh, mm-hmm. sometimes you'll have people that only give you a referral <clears throat> and sometimes you have people who will only give you repeat business. But if you have somebody who's like all three of those, right? So they wrote the review first, mm-hmm. then they gave you probably a referral just chronologically that's the odds are that that's going to happen next and then they came back for repeat business. Like that person is a two percenter because it's fractal, right? So it's twenty percent and twenty percent and twenty percent. Um, if I'm doing the math right, um, and the idea there is like figure out that like the, basically if you're talking in the context of a CRM, like you should break those people out into their own sub list. 
So uh, we, here's, we here's, have, here's we, another way to think about it when you're talking about the math is <clears throat> is this the way this also breaks down is one percent of your database will account for fifty percent of your revenue. Well, that's that's where that's where this all goes. That's why it's so important to do that. Ricardo, were you gonna? Yeah. So, you know, from a tactical perspective, I I guess, and I don't remember if I've talked about her before, but Lisa Mejri is an agent in uh, San Diego. So she split up her uh, database into her A's, her B's, and her C's, and you know, people do that. Mm-hmm. Um, we have sales reps that do that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have sales reps that do that. Yeah. Um, she has her her super fans. And so once a month, she does an event. She doesn't do a big event. Uh, like I have an agent now who's spending, I think, ten or fifteen thousand dollars to do this big event. You don't have to go big to do something for your super fans. And so every month, she sets a budget. It could be fifty bucks. It could be a hundred bucks. And she invites everybody in that list to this event. And I remember one of the events that she did was uh, she rented out a movie theater and they watched uh, Toy Story Four. And she filmed the whole yep. thing, and she invited her super fans. And any time that somebody in that list or that database, that segment, refers her to somebody, whether that person converts or doesn't, just the fact that they're doing an endorsed introduction, mm-hmm. um, she gives them a like a Starbucks VIP business card and says, hey, Scott, just want to thank you so much for the referral. I'm going to meet with Dustin next week. Um, want to say thank you. Here's a Starbucks card. Do me a favor, don't reload it because I'm going to reload it for you for the next six months. Whether that referral turns into a transaction or not, she's rewarding the behavior. That is precisely what we're talking <clears throat> about. She's she's just continuously rewarding the behavior, and she keeps doing that for all of her super fans. So let me let me so, tell you real well, quick. Let, let, Go ahead. Okay, I, I I just wanted to take one step back because I wanted to build off of that because that's where she is. How did she get there? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what if you don't do anything? So like I had just mentioned, our no, the number of reviews we have is I don't think is representative of the value that we brought to our database. We haven't extracted that database. So how do you find them? If you're a local real estate agent, um, invite all of your past clients, and if you feel like you don't have this at all, invite all of your clients to a picnic, mm-hmm. right? To a past well, client appreciation it, event. It, like I said, and it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive, but spend $1,000 or spend $2,000 because what is the lifetime value of somebody that buys more than one home from you, leaves you a five-star review that somebody else sees that buys a home from you, or tells one other person to do business with you to buy a home from you. You're making tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars over a very short period of time. So you invest a thousand dollars. Now the people that showed up, that's your 20%. Oh, interesting. That's your 20%. So do you think that that's an accurate? Cause I mean, I see conceptually, but then I think, you know, like maybe I'm a one percenter, but I just can't make the bar, you know, the, the, the get together. I I don't think it's, well, yeah. when's the last time you got in a car and drove to a vendor's event, right? Somebody who did a service for you. I, that's I a mean, good that, point. The last time I did it high... was uh, my IT company here uh, through an event at the movies. And you're totally right because, A, I really love the vendor. They like I've had multiple IT companies. They've all been terrible. This one has been amazing. And so I wanted to go kind of hang out with them. I can't remember the movie, but it was, it was a hit movie. It was one of those blockbuster movies. And then... Um, when I showed up, I felt amazing, and I've referred them multiple times. So, okay. All right. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Said. All right. Thanks, Scott. That's a wrap. <laughs> so, no. It, and, and so here's something that Perry's really big on, Perry Marshall is really big on, and, and full disclosure, I, I paid Perry Marshall for coaching um, because I love his philosophy. It's like I a reverse his, disclosure. I, I love it. Reverse disclosure. <laughs> Most people be well, like, I get paid by Perry, and you're like, no, I pay the guy. No, no I, I pay him because that information for me was so revelatory. It was so being around people, and this is why the three of us are doing this, because as we talk these things out and we have these conversations, and that's what the marketing trench is, that's what we're trying to accomplish here is – we spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff. We pay people to hear their other their ideas right. and to hang out with people that have ideas that are high, crazy ideas um, that we can then take and we can mold into our own thing. So w- one of the big things it's it's there's there's two pieces to this. One piece is identifying 
who you should be investing in. And, and even more important than that is not spending time and energy on the people that aren't going to give you that return. Yeah, that's huge. So it's removing things from your life. And, um, and it's and it's a process of identifying where's the twenty percent of energy you should do, and how do I never do the eighty percent again? How do I exclude those you're in things a from really my life? Really good place when you get there. Oh, you're in an you're amazing in a- place. So in the last thirty days, um, I do not go on social media. I do I do thirty minutes of social media after five thirty. Um, I don't turn on my computer in the morning. I don't watch news in the morning. Um, the first thing I do is I write out what's a big problem that what's a big issue that I want to think about today. And, and I just start writing about it and I probably spend an hour. I don't turn on my computer. I don't do anything. I just sit there and I think the other thing that he does, which I think is absolutely amazing is every single day, read something that was written before Gutenberg because that book had to have been handwritten and thought out and hand copied think of the bible right, right think right. of monks sitting in a cave somewhere hand writing all of that stuff those are principles that are so strong that if it survived to today from what was gutenberg 14 1400s, 1500s. Yeah, yeah, right around so there. The, the, in the, we're talking about the printing press. Right. So, so if something was written, if something survived today from prior to the printing press, there was some thought put into it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so okay. So I'll tell you why this is just hitting me right between the eyes as somebody who runs a sales and marketing team. Right. I've got a team of now five people, um, and we run into this problem all the time where it's like, how can we get more leads, you know? And so like one conversation we're actively having right now is do we spend $7,000 to advertise in a mark in a magazine, Mm -hmm. (sighs) a print magazine that talks to real estate professionals in our community. Right. And I am so skeptical of that. Like I am so skeptical, but uh, the reason that it's even a live conversation is because my sales team is convinced that being in this magazine will create awareness, right? That's the word we always hear. And will that you know that awareness will help them open up doors and get it in conversations and they can build personal relationships. So while we're having this conversation, the conversation we're not having is, hey, who are the uh, 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 people out of the hundreds we work with that love you, that talk to you, that can't wait to take your call, that tell other people about you, what are you doing for them? Like, what if I were to take $7,000 and, you know, just have a, hey, you guys are awesome, let's hang out and go, you know, let's go out and have a night on the town, right? Maybe a Duffy, maybe, you know, nice dinner somewhere. I would be willing to bet if you analyzed your sales from the last 12 months that there's probably less than a dozen people that sent you 95% of your business. Oh, Yeah. So what can you do for those dozen people? Take them to Maestro's. Shit. Right, right. It's five thousand dollars. You take those people. You take those people for a night out of town. <clears throat> you take them anywhere, and and that's just going to exponentially blow up your entire business. It's um, it's a powerful, powerful concept, man. I mean, it's mind blowing. It so really is. From from my perspective, it's it's what's the highest and best use of funds. Or another way to look at it is you can spend a dollar and you can get zero dollars in return. A lot of us do that. Most people do that with Facebook ads, for example, right? They're just like, they spend dollars, they get zero dollars in return. Or you could spend a dollar and get maybe two dollars in return, which is nice. Like, you know, you doubled your money. But this Pareto principle, this Pareto distribution and the Matthew principle, 80-20 rule, if it's done well, what what you're suggesting and kind of what we're digging at here in the marketing trench today strategically is, yeah, that dollar will yield $10 or $20. Like, it will yield a ton, um, partly because what you're doing is you're talking to the people that are already fired up about you, and you are just stoking that fire with, like, the movie night, so the VIP, you know, Starbucks well, it, card. It's not what you invest met that dollar into. It's who you invest that dollar into. Yeah, well, yeah. What and yeah. who. Yeah. What and who. Yeah. I mean, you could do <clears throat> almost any what to the right who, and they're going to appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and quite frankly, you are going to put more thought and time and effort into somebody if you know how valuable that 
relationship, if you truly appreciate the relationship you have with that person, you're going to think more. You're not going to buy them a tchotchke because <laughs> you're going to feel like that's not representative of how much I value our relationship. Okay, so now I want to, I think we fleshed this, this concept out, but one audience member I have in my mind is we're talking about this is the audience member who's new to the business. So a new real estate agent, a new, uh, someone who's new in title or escrow or a new lender, they don't have the database where they can go back and say, here's my reviews. Here's my repeat referral business. Can they somehow apply? And this is totally like, this is totally cold. So the answer to this might be no, but can they somehow apply the 80, 20 rule to, to the people they know, to whatever database exists. Sphere of influence. What's well, their SOI? Yeah, it's their yeah. sphere of influence. And <clears throat> and if you have those true relationships, um, you're having deep conversations with them and you're making, you're not just asking them, do you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell in the next six months? You're spending time building those relationships and that's probably networking. And on, honestly, I started as a loan officer before the subprime market collapse. I was young. Agents would always tell me, um, that's cute. Go get some experience or no, thanks. We already have an in-house lender, but I was, and now you're on the marketing trench podcast. <laughs> Who's laughing now, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but really like I met people like you, I, I network with other agents and I was having those conversations. I mean, that's where you start. Yeah. Start with your sphere of influence and get at it. And yeah, now, I met Dustin because I know you. <laughs> so, I want to thank you for that. Uh, the the reason we're laughing is because <laughs> as we're recording this, that it's the week the of Ricardo's one. birthday, and I handed him a card, <laughs> and it said that uh, I told Ricardo, I said, "I'm glad that you were born because if you hadn't been bored, I probably wouldn't have met Scott." <laughs> 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 that's that's how you know that I like you is because I just dig at you, and that's how we roll. That's how we that's roll. How, that's how we roll. <laughs> so 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 going back to the question then so dive into your sphere of influence um, maybe see who seems to be most uh, excited about the project you're doing um, or who you know who might be like oh you know that's really cool you should talk to so and so right well and, and then what I would say to that is is at some point um, just pure dumb brute force effort is going to <laughs> achieve you're going to achieve your first client what is that experience you're delivering for that client? Yeah. And then what is that relationship that you're building? Do not think of transactions. Change your entire mindset to lifetime value of that client. What is that client worth to you in 20 years from now? And it's not necessarily how many homes they're going to buy and sell. It's are they going to leave you a review? Are they, what are they going to tell their friends and family about you? Yeah. So make those investments, and if that person seems like they're very appreciative and if they start to invest they're not just a they're not just a past client that's a database now continue to invest in the people that give you that positive feedback I mean, a lifetime value when you're starting out though is really hard to assess right it, i mean a, well no it's a mind it's a mindset so so actually i forgot a vital a very very vital piece of this and the only reason that 8020 works is if you have feedback so that feedback loop is what feeds and what drives where you put that effort and energy. So if you do a, a business for a client and they're a pain in the ass <coughs> and they seem like they're just ready to be done with you after that point, that's that feedback loop. That's not a person that you're going to invest a bunch of time and energy into. But if you're getting positive feedback from that client, you are... And this gets kind of technical, not technical, but it clinical, I guess. You're you're reinforcing that relationship. You're pre-framing the fact that you you and I are going to be doing business, and I'm going to be doing business with you and everybody you know for a very very long time. And right. you're pre-framing that at every step, and you can tell from the very first time you have start having those relationships. Hey, <laughs> is this somebody that I just click with? And um. You know, that's what that's the cool thing about online marketing and internet marketing and lifestyle marketing and being like the digital mayorism is if you're just out there being you, the people that you attract, those are the people that you invest in yeah. because you're you're being genuine. That's that transparency, that's that genuineness. If you're just subscribed to the most recent sales strategy and I have the best script, 
that script does not that script is to get people persuade people to do what you want them to do at the time but that's not really investing in that long-term relationship yeah okay so i mean i think that's actually a great place to wrap this thing up so the 80 20 rule as we dug into this trench the big idea here is that not everyone in your database is created equally and what you want to do is you want to dive in and figure out Who's giving you that feedback, that positive feedback, right? And, and direct your limited time and resources to the most positive feedback loop you have. To those you. people. And that will grow. That like that group will grow over time. That's not a fixed group, right? Yeah. Um, because you're going to have more clients. Well, exponentially, because you don't start here. You start there. Uh, you don't. You, if you're not watching the video, you don't start low. You start high, right? Because you, you have High people, trust. High trust. Yeah. Um, and uh, so... But, and, and, and don't just stop at um, the first group, right? So don't just start at the first 20%, because you can go fractally even deeper. You can say, okay, of this, peop- of this group, who did not only give me a review, but also a referral or also repeat business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you can go multiple levels deep with it. You know your business. You know the different layers of uh, ways that you get you know, money or value from people. And then take your limited resources, like Scott was just saying, and pour it into that, you know, the more, the more you can subdivide that 80-20 group, um, the more return you're likely to get on dollars spent on that group. It, and, and you don't ignore the 80%. You don't ignore the 90 or the 95%. But those are the people that you put into HomeBot. Those are the people that you send out uh, emails to once a month or whatever. Right. Those are the people that you divert. You divert the Lower, 20% or the 5%. Effort. You put in the 5% of your marketing budget to the 80% of the people. Um, but but you'll have people that will bubble out of that. So So when somebody rises above that 80 percent you recognize them and then you bring them into the fold and then that's how you determine who you invest more money into yeah and and the thing i think that we've seen out there is that people they treat the stuff that really should just be targeted at the 80 percent. so they treat the easy stuff the automated emails the you know the online social media marketing campaigns like that's that that is the low effort stuff that should go to the 80 percent, and they treat that like the thing that should get them their business from the 20 percent Right. Or they mark it with a shotgun instead of a sniper rifle. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And so um, hopefully what you're hearing out of this is that um, there's ways to be even like this is this is a this is a precision tool that we're offering here. This is a, a mental model for precision. Um, whereas some of the other stuff we've talked about is sort of it's broader strokes, right? It's yeah. it's more mass market. And, and I think the most important thing that I want to say here, this is literally flipping on a switch. This is a <clears throat> mental, this is a mental perception this is a mindset this isn't something that requires special skills or or a lot of money to do Mm. it is literally a mental switch you flip that switch on and it's going to be impossible for you to not see this in everything that you do wow yeah that's powerful that right there that actually just helped me out (laughs) um so awesome so this has been the marketing trench podcast if you have been thinking or your brain has been just really stimulated by this and you've been thinking about this as we've been talking about it go to our community page uh check out our show notes we'll tell you where to interact with us we'd love to hear your feedback if you've applied this and had success Mm -hmm. uh please share those stories if you've tried to apply this and you haven't had success share those stories too because maybe you know maybe as a group together we can troubleshoot maybe that will spark a conversation for a future episode of the podcast um, and as always, if you're enjoying the show, please do tell your friends about it. Uh, please like us and give us a review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. iTunes is amazing if you could do that. Um, and we just appreciate you checking this out and listening to the 8020 uh, principles we discussed it today. This has been the Marketing Trench Podcast. Until next time. Yeah. yeah.